The thing with time travel is that it's unpredictable. Every time you jump back in time or change something in the past, a new timeline is created. Even if you go back, stand completely still and not alter anything, your very presence creates a new linearity. There are now atoms in existence, yours, that were not there moments ago in the original timeline, thus a new universe. Time travel happens all the time across the known universe and who knows about the rest of creation. When the changes are small, then no one notices. Sometimes large changes are buried or fixed, minimising the differences to a degree where things remain fixed. And sometimes you build a chronology deleting super weapon in the hopes to destroy a supposedly extinct ancient empire before it enslaves the universe, and you accidentally assimilate Romulus. When that happens, people are going to know you fracked up. The entire planet of Romulus has been restored, however something else seems to have occurred, namely that the Borg have made a push into the Beta Quadrant and taken the planet, transforming it into a Unimatrix. Our temporal shielding, being generated by the Anorax timeship, has kept us from being changed to fit this new timeline, but as a result, we don't have a record of history to work from. We need to know what we did wrong. No. We expected to see some Borg activity, but this can't be right. Okay, nobody panic. We just need to work out what happened. I agree that this is unexpected, Commander, but we knew there would be anomalies. <laughs> we need more information. Let's find out where the simulation might have gone wrong. Captain Nog, I suggest you keep that time ship out on the edges of the system, ready to warp away while we do the sensor sweeps. The last thing we need are the Borg getting their hands on that Krenim time ship. The whole system can't be assimilated, can it? That is a lot of Borg. Yes, it looks like the Borg have been here for a long time. They, they're pretty firmly entrenched. The Republic's Lasset and the USS Armager move in to investigate the system. If we are to correct our mistake, we need to learn what change wasn't accounted for from the simulations. Because right now, this is reality, but fortunately we still have the time ship. According to these scans, the planet has been completely assimilated. I'm not detecting any non-Borg life signs. This is bad. Really, really bad. We need to fix this. Agreed. Remember what I said about not- Borg ships decloaking! Red alert! Borg ships decloaking! Decloaking. Borg have cloaking devices now. Of course they do. They've assimilated the Romulans. Oh my god. <laughs> First the Klingons, now the Borg. Does everyone steal cloaking technology from us? As the Borg vessels decloak and open fire, we engage the probes and spheres that try to stop us. Okay, maybe now we panic a little. Shit, 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 shit. Borg plasma streaks over our shields and drains our defenses. Borg reinforcements on an intercept course. Fortunately, the Borg don't seem to have grown much more powerful in this altered timeline. It's just there's a lot more of them. But the advances Starfleet and the Romulan Republic have made from the Delta Alliance now are preserved in the Armager and the Lasset at least while the temporal shielding holds. The massive Borg cube is flanked by smaller probes, but the Lasset deploys tractor drones to greater effect and our phasers have little trouble in whittling down the Goliath's shields. Romulus had a population of 18 billion at its peak prior to its destruction in 2387, but who knows how far back this system was taken by the Borg. 
In the prime reality, they began to show an interest in Romulan space in 2364, plucking up entire colonies along the neutral zone border from both the UFP side and Romulans, so presumably the assimilation took place between these two dates. well out of Borg sensor range while you go in and find out what happened. Hurry, more Borg will be arriving soon. Well, don't go too far, we still need the temporal shielding, or we'll become part of this timeline. I've modified some personal shield generators to shield you temporally as well. I'm transporting them over now. Hurry, the temporal shielding drains a lot of power. You won't have much time down there before you're unprotected. If that happens, this will be your new reality. As weird as this sounds, I didn't plan on taking my time down there. Timet notes that the time ship has enough power left for a second shot, but then the capacitors will be burnt out. The vessel honestly needed more time in development, but that was time the Iconians didn't give us. Still, if there's one good thing about this whole new reality, it's that the Iconians aren't around at the minute, but according to our simulations they're still out there somewhere and we've only delayed their inevitable invasion. We need more data to plot a possible solution. With any luck, the Borg will have what we need. Maybe. Our focus is on restoration. There is a computer node in this area of the Unimatrix that should have what we need. Find the node and download all the data you can from the point where we made our incursion. That should help us find out how to fix this. Then we can compare the data and find the change. I'm going to join you. I know this place. Or at least I knew this place. Before we lost the homeworld, it was a Tal Shar complex. Most of the secrets of our empire were stored here. I thought I was getting my home back, but now the Borg have taken it all away. This is like losing Romulus all over again. Chin up Commander Jurok, apparently this also happened to Earth once, but the Enterprise fixed that. The controls ahead of us will unlock the bulkheads. So currently, temporal shielding is keeping us from integrating into this timeline, meaning if it fails it's likely Jurok here will phase away worse. As for this place being a reconstructed Tau Shi'ar base, well that makes sense. The Borg have adapted a facility for information into a data center. The whole planet. All our people. They're Borg. They are, and though Borg drones usually ignore intruders if they seem benign, clearly they've associated us with the ships in orbit and they don't want us here. We quickly put down the initial welcoming committee, but not before we notice that the Borg have adapted to our weapons. We're going to need to install phase modulators back into our gear, having removed them for other equipment slots. You can replicate new ones for zero cost from the replicator menu if you don't have them on you at the time. It looks like we're in some subterranean cavern, or maybe it's just a really large building. Either way, we locate the mechanism to unlock the next door, and we move on. I can't believe we were so wrong. So many have died during the Iconian War, but this is hard to judge. I think it may be just as bad on a purely numbers game. And now the Borg have a foothold near Federation space, who knows what the state of the rest of the Alpha and Beta Quadrants is. More drones assail us as we proceed into the Unimatrix data center. Cover me! I'll override the door controls. Some of these drones are still in early stages of assimilation. You can see the Romulan Tau Shi'ar uniforms. So perhaps it's still early days for Romulus? And then again, we just can't tell for sure. We take the seconds of free time to remodulate our gear just as more drones activate. As Jurok attempts to override the door, we have to cover her. You know, it's morbid, but I'm kind of reminded of like a horror flick where some well-intentioned ritual to bring back a loved one instead drags back a reanimated soulless husk from the dead instead. Probably shouldn't voice that to Jurok. Got it. With the door open, we rush through, unwilling to engage any more advancing drones. They kind of have us outnumbered. We have to find a way to make this right. The next corridor springs more, uh, Drogos, on us, but a well-placed grenade clears us a path. 
The Borg, however, are not amused. Resistance is futile. There. That's the access node console we need. Looks like we are inside a structure of some sort, and that towering column is likely a Borg hard drive of sorts. An archive of all the information collected and stored here. It's a hell of a library. I'd love to be able to look through it all, but time is not on our side, as I think we've proved. Locked. We'll have to circumvent their security measures. Wait! Incoming Borg! The operating system here is still Romulan in places, so it looks like the process of assimilation is still ongoing. Either that or the Romulans just have a more efficient design than the Borg do. Every time we reach a new stage of decryption at a new terminal, three in total, several drones beam in to secure it. So far they're just being reactionary, I'd hate to see what happens when they really try to stop us. When we lost the homeworld, I thought that was the worst thing that could happen to us. You will be assimilated. This was Romulan technology once but it's been completely assimilated. Akiv? Akiv? No, I shot like... Oh. You will become one with the Borg. Resistance is futile. Akiv, or Secundus of Borg, as he is now, was probably here overseeing this Tal Shiar base when it was overrun, so the Borg put his knowledge to use. <laughs> it doesn't seem to matter what timeline he's in. Hakeev, you're always being a tool. When he finally falls, we move on to the original terminal and gain access to their archives. It is initially full of drone logs, so we have to narrow down our inquiry. We index by year and look at the Romulan system only, oldest results first. We find that Romulus was added to the Collective on Stardate 68589.04. This would have placed it around 2390 after the supernova would have happened. It was then we designated Unimatrix 652. It looks like the main invasion of Romulan space occurred about 20 years ago. Something happened in the Delta Quadrant. The Borg assimilated something that greatly improved their technology. They adapted evolved, and my people, they didn't have a chance. Maybe it's our fate to lose Romulus. When dealing with time travel, it's hard to avoid thinking that there is such a thing as fate. But who knows, let's just try and focus on doing our mistake first, shall we? Let's get out of here. There are more than 20 board ships on an intercept course. More Borg on the way. We return to our ships and set course for the edge of the system, but the Borg aren't going to let us go with our prize quietly. Borg decloaking! No, that, that still sounds weird to me. Borg vessels approach us and try to prevent us from leaving. Fortunately, they've not yet discovered the anoraks on the edge of the system. As before, the Lisette deploys tractor drones to hold a steer in place as we pummel it with our full force. Yes, exploding fiery green plasma. Transmit the data! Hurry! We're under attack! We oh, we should, uh, yeah, Nog? We're losing power. Send the data now before we lose temporal shielding. Right, yes, uh, prepare to receive it. Focus on your repairs. We will make sure the data is preserved. Unfortunately, as we prep to transmit, more Borg vessels arrive. This happens every time we enter a new phase of transmission, so if you don't want to rush things, you can stagger the waves and deal with them as they come. Data is compressed and ready. Channel confirmed. Data received. If we target the Borg trans warp network, the Borg may never be able to reach one. It is a great risk. The Borg have a great deal of influence on the timeline, and there is no time to run simulations. We have a choice. We 
do not. Targeting the transwarp network. Firing the weapon! Now! The Borg are gone. But so is Romulus. Romulus isn't the only thing we lost. Temporal shielding is failing. What happened? The Borg did too much damage to the generators. If we lose the temporal shielding, we'll all reintegrate with the timeline. Has anything else changed? Checking? No. The Tretarians, they're what? gone. How? I see the problem. 20 years ago, your people tried to replicate the work of the Solene to protect In themselves this timeline, from the Borg. They failed. Temporal shield is at 8%. No, I need to restabilize the shields. I'm downloading my personal files into the shielded core. You'll have all my research notes and everything we've recorded from this mission. You're giving up? When the shield fails, if the Tutarians were lost in the past, then you'll be lost, too. Temporal shield is losing integrity. Is there anything we can do? No, we all knew the risks. I love After a failed assault on Iconia, the Alliance fleet of Klingon, Romulan and Federation ships was all but destroyed. The mission began as an effort to launch a final attack against the Iconia Dyson Sphere in order to steal out control of the Gateway Network from them and deny them their space hopping advantage. Things seemed to be going well as we gained access to their command Dreadnought and even learned that the Iconian leader Matara was aboard. Uncovering a weakness in their setup, we managed to kill a god but were forced to retreat when two more turned up to avenge their comrade. The strike team, depleted from the constant battles, had to retreat and we fled the sphere with notions of regrouping only to find that the fleet had been reduced to wrecks. Now with most of our resources spent, the Alliance is leaning ever more on the completion of the Krenim Temporal Weapon. We beam over to the Krenim timeship. Based on the unfinished project of the scientist Anorax, it's clearly been a... Uh, huh, there's no one here to greet us. Uh, Tomet informs us that we're to report immediately to the conference room as apparently there's been a development... already? Walking through the darkened corridors, there's definitely a sense of urgency in the facility. We reach the briefing room to find it occupied with many a familiar face. From the observatory window, we can see the time ship pulled up from its pre-flight testing, probably the only weapon we have against the Iconians. Nearby, we have the scientist Noye sporting his trademark beard, while a shadowed corner houses Section 31 agent Franklin Drake talking in hushed tones with temporal agent Philip Cray. Okay, Captain Nog, what's this all about? I've had a very strange morning. Things have felt a little off all day. We found a temporally shielded computer core, and it shows two uses of the Krenim weapon. But as far as I know, the Iconians are still out there. We changed the timeline, but we didn't fix our most important problem. I'm sorry. Come again? We've already used the... But I just turned up to... Wait, no, hang on. What? We already did this, and we changed time, so the world we're living in now is different? Different in what way? What have we changed? We won't be sure until we finish analyzing the data, but the Krenum weapon was used twice. I remember being on the bridge of the Krenum ship and seeing a readout with a far lower power reserve than had just been there a moment before. I'm sure you had a similar situation. So the weapon's power levels simply just suddenly dropped from your perspective, huh? As to the greater differences, we'll know more soon. I only hope the ripples from what we did today don't start a tsunami. Yeah. Okay, this is weird. This is going to take a minute to get my head around. We haven't dug that far into the data yet, and it will take some in-depth investigation to catalog all of the changes. Noi is going to lead the group taking care of that. I will say it is uh, odd to find personal logs I don't remember making. Yeah, I imagine so. Thank God for the uh, temporarily shielded archive. Strange. Very. 
but from what we've already seen, it appears the reason the weapon was fired twice was because we had to try to correct a change we made. Technology like this seems so simple, but even the smallest change can make more trouble than it solves. We have to be more cautious. Far more cautious than we've already been, I suppose. The next mistake might not be fixable. Time alteration might not be the answer. There are some problems that can't be solved with a weapon. But time travel... <sighs> Look, whatever happens, it was good working with you. I hope we have the chance to do so in the future. Likewise. I'm sorry, this is all just very weird. One minute Kagran tells me I'm needed to help test the blooming thing, and then next it's all been cancelled. Let's see what everyone else has to say. We've put so much hope into using the Krenum technology to solve our problems. Perhaps I was caught up in the possibilities and blind to the potential for disaster. We tried and we failed. But this isn't the end. We'll keep looking at the simulations as well as any other option open to us. I have to have faith that we will find a way to defeat the Iconians. Uh, we have that archive, and sure, the weapon's now been depleted, even though no one ever remembers firing it, but there could be something useful there. I was conducting another simulation, and all of a sudden I got an emergency call telling me to stop everything. I will be looking at whatever data we managed to save to try and determine what went wrong. Maybe we can try again after we know more. Ah, Adrana, haven't seen you for ages. Still, I hope you find something. We can't afford another mistake like the one we apparently already made. It has been good to have you here, but we will have to consider if time alteration is really the best course of action. Of all the records we have of time travel, few have as drastic a result as this. Perhaps removing elements from the time stream isn't the solution we need. Yeah, well, it would be a shame to let all this research go to waste. Still, there's always other things we can do. Noye, still as bristly as ever I see, and I don't just mean the facial fuzz. I have a lot of information to analyze. The shielded core appears to have made it through the process intact, and will give us a wealth of data on the timeline and how the changes have affected it. Clearly, you made a mistake somewhere. I still feel this is the best technology available to us, but we will need minds sufficient to the task to operate it. You know what? I'm not even going to rebuke that, because I don't know what happened. But it was probably my fault. We call back to the Armager. If we're not needed right now, I guess we can busy ourselves with patrols or something. The thing with time travel is that it's unpredictable. Every time you jump back in time or change something in the past, a new timeline is created. Even if you go back, stand completely still and not alter anything, your very presence creates a new linearity. There are now atoms in existence, yours, that were not there moments ago in the original timeline, thus a new universe. Time travel happens all the time across the known universe and who knows about the rest of creation. When the changes are small, then no one notices. Sometimes large changes are buried or fixed, minimising the differences to a degree where things remain fixed, and sometimes you build a temporarily shielded archive that records when changes have happened and provides a literal time capsule that jumps universes. Captain Nog tells me that the initial test of the Krinum weapon was less than promising. He says that he and his team have a great deal of data still to analyze, but I do not believe they will find much that will assist us. Removing elements from the time stream is reckless, and while our options are limited, we should not destroy ourselves in a fruitless effort to destroy the Iconians. It is time to consider all of our alternatives. So, with that all wrapped up, before it even began, we're left to ponder over how our Krenim temporal weapon went, what went wrong, and if it's worth fixing. Whatever the Alliance decides, they better make it soon. The damage we dealt to the Iconians is not sure to last, and I doubt we have the resources to hold out much longer. So thank you for watching this part of the Star Trek Online story series, as we delve into the closing chapter of the Iconian War, when we visit the galaxy in its infancy 200,000 years ago to make sure the Iconians never have this chance. Who knows what timelines will be produced, but even the small changes can have lasting repercussions. So, 
thanks again. I've been Rick and I hope to see you back for the next part of the Star Trek Online Stories series, and until then, goodbye. <laughs>